So when the moon is in its fullest, most juiciest state, it's called cresting. <laughs> guys it's terry it's so good to see you how's your heart how's your heart doing i hope it's doing okay i am at this very moment giving my heart some focus and attention because as we know where we place our focus and attention that's where energy goes so right now this very moment i don't know if you can see it but i'm actually giving my heart some energy right now now, this very moment in front of your eyeballs. <sighs> so I wanted to share with you today my routine, if you wanna call it a ritual, whatever you wanna call it, to harness in the energy of the full moon. So I'm gonna share with you what I do, how I do, and why I do. So, the full moon, so when the, the, you know, the moon goes through phases, yes? And there is energy in every single thing, whether something is density or matter, or whether it's just a light wave that has a high frequency that's moving fast, everything is energy. It's just how fast are those waves moving will determine where the waves are in this scale of energy, okay? So the full moon, that part of the phase of the moon cycle is, they consider full moon when it crests, when it's it's, its biggest, juiciest, fattest place, right? And it's an ephemeris that will tell you, it's the book of all of the planetary and celestial um, activities, uh, locations, all of the fun things. Now, I am not a professional astrologer, but I'm a professional energist. So I uh, go by energy. And for me, astrology is pretty, pretty strong with energy. Now, what I don't do is I don't hold myself hostage to where planets or celestial um, planets celestial entities, asteroids, whatever. I don't hold myself hostage to what they could potentially represent. And that's because I know and I understand how energy works. And if you can harness energy, you can control or manipulate it um, to at least adapt or integrate it into your energetic field. So just because Mercury is in retrograde, it doesn't mean your life has to go for shit. That's just an example of how people can be held hostage to a planet, <laughs> right? But there is energy associated with the phases of the moon. So when the moon is in its fullest, most juiciest state, it's called cresting, right? So it usually crests or it is uh, stationed or positioned in a real estate part of the pie of the universe. So usually it's in a certain house, okay, which again is a certain real estate of uh, a, um, what do you wanna call it, of a chart. And it, so it's in a house and um, it's usually in a sign as well okay which is a planet well no moon is the planet so it's in a sign in a house the sign is are the s like the 12 astrological signs and there are 12 pieces of the real estate pie of the universe so a planet is in a sign in a house Okay, now a lot of us don't have access to where the moon is, at what degree. Remember, the ephemeris tells us all these tiny details. To what degree, what house, blah, 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 blah. And as an energist, you don't need to know that. You just have to tap into the frequencies of generally what it represents. So the moon, a full moon, typically represents letting go or releasing of something that no longer serves you. 
A new moon is for creating and bringing in desires and wishes, which I'll do another video on and I'll show you my ritual for that. But, and it's very similar actually to my rituals for the full moon. Now, if you're gonna do an actual witchcraft ritual, it's gonna be different than what I'm showing you because I make this my own. Because again, I'm an energist. I go by energy that I connect and resonate with because again, I'm harnessing energy. I am controlling and manipulating energy for the benefit of me and what I connect and resonate with. So I will take bits and pieces of various pagan rituals that I connect and resonate with and make it my own, okay? So the full moon represents letting go and releasing, okay? An example, I just wanna show you an example, is that today, for example, the full moon is in Aquarius, okay? So if you were by any chance to have a chart and look at where your uh, natal, meaning where you were born, your natal chart, it's gonna look like this, okay? So this is my natal chart. Wah, wah, wah. Right, so this is my natal chart. You see the planet, uh, the signs on the outside. These are the houses and inside here, these are all the planets, right? So since the moon is in Aquarius, we're gonna look for, and again, what I'm showing you is super basic, okay? This is what's good for me. It may be good for you. If it's not good for you, you can create something that's good and right for you. Each and every one of us has our own vibrational signature, our own vibrational frequencies. And you do you, boo. There's no right or wrong way. And if anybody tells you you're doing something wrong, tell them to fuck off because this is about you and this is about your truth and what works for you. So. This is my chart. Now, I'm gonna look at where Aquarius is. Um, let's see, here it is. There's my Aquarius right here. My Aquarius is in the second house, okay? So what I would do, and I haven't looked it up yet, what I would do is I would say, okay, if moon, the full moon, which is all about, uh, is representative of like letting go and releasing, my, and it's in Aquarius. Uh, actually, you know what, my bad, it's in the third house, yo. Whoops, Aquarius, third house. Um, it's in the third house. What I would look up is what the third house represents. So I should probably do it really quick. Let me do it really quick and get and, and then get right back to you. And I'm back. I probably should have been more prepared, but whatever, right? Whatever. We go rogue here. We go rogue. We do easy, breezy. We do bite size. We do things that are gonna make us succeed, right? And there's no point in getting overwhelmed and stressed out. So um, I just looked up the third house. The third house is of communication. Mm, 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 mm. So that's about um, communication between people, platonic, romantic communication. It's about data exchanging. So it's how am I going to come across oh, fucking pop ups? <laughs> how am I going to come across? What is it that I want to communicate? Um, and so um, Aquarius is actually about like free, it, it, it's very free and unique, right? So um, this particular full moon, and I'm just giving you an example, this particular full moon is for me is calling for me to release and let go various ways of how I communicate. Now I'm gonna go in a little bit more and just say, you know, like, for, and this is for me, you do what you need to do, but in terms of like, maybe letting go of how controlling I can be in communications or maybe being more combined, uh, compassionate and kind in communications or whatnot. But basically for me, and you would look up like if yours is in relationship, right? Like how can you release and let go what no longer serves for you in the area of relationship? So for me, how can I release and let go um, what no longer serves me in the area of communication, right? As a matter of fact, um, 
I think, and I'll just share this with you because this just popped in. I want to be able to communicate more clearly and directly. So for me, what I would release and, uh, uh, and let go of what no longer serves me is uh, dancing around what it is that I want to say. So that's what I'm going to re release and let go is the dance around what I really want to say, right? So that's just an example. Then what you're going to want to do is now that if you know the area of your life where you're going to uh, release that no longer serves you, you can write down all the different ways in which that can be done. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start writing that down and I will be back. Okie dokie, I'm back. My list isn't very long, but it's, it's, it's there. So um, probably one of the most important things for me I'll share with you is the need to get back to somebody right away if I hear from them for fear of being rejected by them. I mean, there are times where I will, uh, I guess you can call it abandon myself just to make sure that they know that I am here for them or whatnot. You know, it's almost like I'm too much being of service. So I'm worried that if I don't get back to them right away, that um, I'm going to be rejected. They're not going to want to talk to me anymore. So I got to get back to them right away, right away, right away. So that is on my what no longer serves me list. Oh, yeah. Hello. I'm back with a set change, huh? What I wanted to do is I wanted to show you my altar, okay? Well, this is one of my altars. I actually have three altars, but this particular altar houses my full moon stuff, okay? So I'm just gonna briefly show you how I go ahead and do my uh, full moon stuff. Oh, look, you can see the broomstick there in the background. Wah, wah. I'm just gonna do this, make it look, and then you see like, this is the bird cage, uh, the bird perch, isn't that lovely? And then you see me in the back, fabulous. I wanna show you my altar and I wanna show you how I do, um, how I, and like what I, uh, what my next step in my full moon ritual is. Okay, this is my altar. It, I do change it once a month, but this here is for my full moon. So what I do is I have some really fancy pants. Look at this envelope, right? Inside this envelope, which I'll show you in a second. Whoops, sorry. Inside this on envelope are, are things that I have actually done for new moon. Now you might be asking me, what the fuck are you talking about, Terry? What is this you did for new moon? Well, I have something that I do for new moon, um, which is I always write myself an abundance check. Again, this has to do with intention and energy, even though it's not a real check. So this is like my check. Um, I write out a list, just like I wrote out a list of things that no longer serve me. Um, I write a list of things that I want to manifest or create, okay? Um, usually my new moon list is longer and bigger than my full moon list, but this time, because I've been doing a lot of deep inner work, I've been doing a lot of releasing already. So, um, these are just some of the last things that I really want to work on for this new, uh, full moon and any, um, petitions that I have already written out for any types of spells. So this was a hoodoo spell that I did. And so I kept it, I kept the petition for what I'm going to do for this next step and this next part of my full moon ceremony. So stand by, cause I'm gonna show you. Hi, another set change. I'm full of it today, but I'm actually in my kitchen because I am going to do one of the last parts of what I do for my own ceremony. And that is that I take a, I call this my, what do I call this? My holy bowl, because I do all my burning rituals in this. You can see in the bottom, it's like all nasty. But this is just a regular mixing bowl, but it's metal because it won't burn. Because I'm about to set fire to my list, to my petition, to my check, my abundance check, and all the things. So I'm about to set fire. I'm a fire sign, so mama loves this. Um, I'm about to set fire to all of this, which I will show you in a second. 
Um, and what this does is it's part of the release and the letting go. So it is an energetic let go. Now, the way the universe works is that if you think about something too much, it activates the law of repulsion. So the more you want something, the more it goes away. Have you ever noticed that? Like, let's say there's this guy or this girl that you really want to talk to or you want to hear back from, and you're always tracking and logging and looking at your phone. Did they call? Did they call? Did they text? Did they text? And the more they do that, the more, or the more you do that, the more they just don't get back to you. <laughs> So that's called the law of repulsion because you're putting way too much focus. And when, as we know, where we place our focus, that's where energy goes, right? So the more we focus on that, the less it's gonna happen because the universe does not like imbalance, right? It's got this whole thing about keeping all the balancing forces, right? So the more you think about something, the more you want something, the less it comes to you. So we can use this new moon, that energy, to harness that energy of releasing and the letting go and decreasing the importance of everything that we wanted to bring in uh, at the new moon, okay? So I'm gonna prep now for the fire. So as you can see, I am burning shit. I'm actually burning the list, whoa. This is why you wanna make sure that you're doing it with uh, in, a, in an area where there is absolutely no way it can burn anything um, else. So like I'll, I have one of these aluminum, I don't know what you wanna call it, sinks. So this is where I do the burn, right? And it is burning. You can see all the smoke. So this is everything being sent out to the universe. And clearly that helicopter is going to be picking it all up. Yes, yes. So that is the process that I use in which I can harness the energy and release and let go of this moon phase, right? And everything that it's associated with. Uh, burning is a cleansing and it's a clearing and it works really well with letting go and releasing. Now, this is how I do my ritual. If you choose to do one, you can make it completely and totally your own. Now, one of the things that I didn't show you because it is more of a private, more personal thing is before you even start this process, it's really good to get yourself into an energetic state of receptivity for all the good yummy things that will come to you as you let go of things. So you're gonna wanna do some sort of meditation or connection to source to get you all up in there for all the yummy things. So in other words, if you are an Abraham Hicks listener by any chance, it's you're releasing and letting go so that what's in your vortex can come to you, okay? So it is, clearing out different levels of energy and releasing different various frequencies so that the faster frequencies can come in, which is more energy, less matter. So ideally what we want to do as humans is be more energy and less matter so that we can create and manifest everything that we want. So, I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, it was really special for me to show you my practice and my ritual. I hope you were able to get something out of it because um, I actually really love doing it. I feel like it gives me an opportunity to kind of do a brain dump and like an emotional and energetic dump at least once a month. Right, I do tend to do it more, um, but this can actually be a really cool tool to help your mental state too. So this is really good for your mental health as well, to just kind of get out things and use physical, tangible tools so that you can connect to those energies and frequencies. What am I always saying to you? Stay connected. Stay connected to your friends and family. Stay connected to yourself. And of course, you can stay connected to me by checking me out at terryhuberman.com and I'll see ya on the flip side.